back to another episode of BDC. Yes, Bad Dating Chronicles, where I get to sit down with people and they tell me their wonderful stories of bad dating, bad hookups, bad miscommunication, whatever it might be in the success world. We love to call dating. So I would love to bring on my next guest, Miss Nick B. Hey, thank you for having me. <laughs> hey, thank you for coming on and wanting to share. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. So. One that stood out to me particular, um, I remember I met this guy online because, you know, that's how we date today is we date online. And yeah, especially, yep. especially if you are um, someone who doesn't get out much. Me, I, I'm a homebody. If I can meet my man who's the Uber delivery guy, that would be amazing. But since that usually doesn't happen. <laughs> well, um, it can. It just, you know, depends, you know, because you actually see when they're coming. So you'd be like, oh, they're cute. Let's, <laughs> let's see what's going on. Like, I, funny story before we go into it, when I was in Arizona, uh -huh. um, a lady, she delivered my food and she did it a few times. So I guess it's just, it was a rotation. So I actually went and, you know, tried to pursue her and ask her out. Funny thing was, she spoke no English, like none. Yeah, so. <laughs> no, yeah. And I even prepared for the translator and she just kept saying no, no. I'm like, ah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I even got curved by my delivery driver. <laughs> but no, this um this particular situation, so I met him on I can't even recall what dating site. I feel like I've tried a few different ones. And instantly he and I kind of clicked because we went to the same undergrad um university. And mm -hmm. I didn't know him while I was in school, but we kind of common denominator here was that we went to the same school. So, oh, Kiki's and laughs and he's all right looking, obviously, which is what caught my attention in the first place. And so. All right looking. What's all right looking? <laughs> all right looking, I would say. I mean, he wasn't like drop dead gorgeous, like man in the magazine, but he wasn't ugly. He was, he was just all right. And I actually prefer that. Like, Sometimes it's tough dating someone who is just so overly attractive. It can be a little intimidating at times. So I kind of prefer the average Joe. I like the guy that is attractive, but not stopping traffic everywhere he goes, so to say. Oh, okay. So, so he was he was just enough. He was just enough to like, he was attractive, but you know, he needs liquor to at least get the panties off is what you're saying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> In this case, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But before I before I knew him to be this particular bad date, we were good. Like conversation was going great. We had been we got offline and at this point we were, you know, exchanging phone numbers, texting, calling. Um, and that went on for about two weeks two and a half weeks or so before he finally asked me out on a formal date. So I was, I was comfortable with meeting him in person and he offered to pick me up at home, which I thought was so romantic because you know, who picks anybody up these days, right? That should have been my first indicator to not allow him to pick me up. But in my little naive mind, I thought, Oh, what a gentleman he's going to come to my home and pick me up. And this will be just, very ooh la la, right? So he comes and picks me up and instantly I just sort of feel like all the great conversation that we'd had online, there's now nothing really to talk about. And I don't really know what happened, but that chemistry you have sometimes with somebody and you can just talk and talk and talk, we no longer had in person. It was kind of odd. So our plan for our date was to go to the movies. And before the movie started, we um, we stopped at a bar. You know, we had time to kill. Let's grab a drink, talk some more. And at the bar, I really felt like I was interviewing him. I was drawing information out. There was nothing that was naturally flowing. He wasn't just giving information. And it felt really dry and really stagnant. But we're here. Let's just try to make the best of it. So drinks are done it's time to go actually to the movies and the entire time we're in the theater he is just all over me okay handsy i mean you would have thought he had eight arms and legs because it and it 
at first I thought, oh, wow, he just thinks I'm so irresistible, right? You know, we kind of get this feeling like, oh, okay, he's really into me. But he wouldn't stop. And I'm actually trying to watch the film. And, you know, he's trying to put his hands in my shirt and silly me wore a skirt. It was summertime. So he's trying to put his hands up my legs. And I'm literally batting <laughs> this guy off <laughs> in the theaters, all while still trying to present myself as interested. Because at this point, it wasn't like a deal breaker, but it was also like I was trying to create some boundaries and Mm -hmm. how to basically treat me on a first date. Like, I don't know you enough for you to just be literally trying to forgive me, but finger me in the gosh dang movies, okay? And so, mad uncomfortable throughout the whole movie, but the movie comes to an end and we head home. Still not really talking. The car ride home was even more awkward than the car ride to the theater. Um, I don't think we said one word to each other. And finally, we get back to my apartment and I go to get out of the car and he locks the doors. And his type of car, <laughs> his type of car is the ones where the, um, it's like you can't pull up the, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yep. it's smooth, it's flat, right? And so he, he locks the doors and I'm kind of fumbling around like, well, what's going on here? I was like, I'm about ready to get out. And so he just stares me dead in my eyes and he pulls his dick out and he proceeds to masturbate. Interesting. Right. And Interesting. I am now in one of those fight or flight or freeze moments where I'm thinking to myself, if this guy is really this bold, to just whip his no, we, we we weren't kissing there was no conversation there was nothing that led up to this right no there was but conversation there, there was there, in his head yes, <laughs> in his whole head by himself because nothing necessarily prompted this scenario it really caught me off guard but i'm thinking if he is bold enough to just whip it out and to just go to town what won't he do? And so I was in a situation where do I want to run for my life and get out of the car? Like, is he going to chase me? Am I going to embarrass him? And he feel away and this become a, um, a harmful situation for myself. So my best instinct, I just sat there and I just let him finish basically. I didn't know if... <laughs> I didn't know. I just, I, again, I was really like, what won't he do? If, if he's comfortable doing this, am I in danger here? So I just let him finish. And then when he did, I got out and I walked myself to the door and we never spoke again. I think he tried to call me once, but I actually blocked him. And yeah, that was probably, I would hands down say that was my worst date. It was by far my my scariest date. I, I was terrified. Yeah, um, that's that's scary on a couple levels. And all right, so I asked you a couple questions. Yeah. Um. One, why did y'all decide to go to a movie as a first date? As if just you know y'all went, you like you say you went to the bar before. Why couldn't you just like stop there and then go somewhere else other than a dark, dim lit place? So in my head, yes, it's dark and dim lit, but it was still a public place. You uh -huh. know, surrounded by many other people. I wasn't sitting at his home. Um, I kind of, I just let him pick. We had been talking and things felt good when we were talking on the phone. And I didn't get the same sense of stranger danger as I did in that car, but I, I just, I thought, okay. I mean, it's not an ideal first date, but it's okay, is what I there thought. There you go. It's not an ideal. So you should have ran with that and never <laughs> should have went through with that. Because all people know you should never do a movie on a first date because I don't know why people always say, yeah, it was good. No, it's not. Because the person's sitting right here, right uh -huh. next to you. You can't really have a conversation and really like see what's going on with them and see how they're feeling. 
mm-hmm. because y'all are just looking at a screen and sometimes you'll be able to look over. But and that's that's why I thought the drinks ahead of time was cool. Like we had a chance to chit chat and talk. But like I said, the, the conversation was stagnant. We'd already had the tickets. He already purchased the tickets. It was one of those theaters where you, you know, you buy your seats ahead of time because it's the nice mm-hmm. recliner seats. Yeah. And so at that point, even though the conversation was whack at the bar, I was like, well, this is what's next. He's already spent the money. Let's just move forward. You know, it's what I, again, I didn't have stranger danger vibes. I just wasn't getting any vibes at that point, but I was just like, okay, it's just going to be another awkward date. Just, it is what it is. So yeah, that was, Mm. that was by far my worst date. And I've, I don't think I've ever done movies for a first date with a guy since. Yeah, never. never. I know I have never um, for a first or even second date had a guy pick me up. I've met him. (laughs) Um, But yeah, that was, that was by far my worst date. Yeah. it's like there's so much to say but then as you say you just you didn't know you're naive and that's okay because if Mm -hmm. you're willing to admit to it then it makes it easier because someone can't get mad at you for not knowing but i just don't understand why people use the movies as a first date basis as you know the groundwork i think that it's kind of an old school mentality i i don't know if it's a i i don't think that in today's world of dating it's a good choice but i think back in the day when we were growing up and hearing about what dating looked like to our parents or even our grandparents it was oh burger joint in a movie you know like when you think back about what dating used to look like Mm -hmm. and i think that's probably where the idea comes from of a suitable date of dinner in a movie because we hear it and it's sort of taught to us at a young age, at, a, at that naive state where we don't think about places to go or things to do or how we want to interact. And I just think that's probably where that comes from. <laughs> yeah, I stopped doing like taking you to the movies on a first date because- so, Yeah, um, what is your ideal first date if- it See, it all depends on the conversation and how we're talking and what ideas that we come up with. Mm-hmm. So it's more like i want yes we want both want to be in a public place especially for a first time meeting Mm -hmm. but it also wants to be comfortable and enjoyable so now it's like we almost have a litany of things to where we just say oh let's do this let's do that let's not be so cliche so Uh i i mean i could list off a number of things but it it don't fit how we're fitting then it's just pointless really yeah no, I I hear you. Cause like I'll take you to drinks and then like okay, well let's go to a park. Let's just have these drinks and then walk this liquor off. And then uh-huh. as you're walking it off, we're still talking, we're still enjoying the time. So you so have are to you almost to the parks at night or is this a day date? It it depends on when I'm we're not meeting. Through the park at night either. I'm like, not. I'm not saying <laughs> that feels. Right. Like, I might get kidnapped. I don't know. I mean, if you get kidnapped, if someone comes out, run. I mean, I'm not going to tell you what to do. <laughs> you got enough sis just like me. So if you don't give up. If I'm going on a first date with you, this is our first date. Much like I didn't know this guy well <clears> enough <throat> to know that he was going to turn into whatever that was in the car. Like, if it's a first date and we're just walking through a park at night, I yeah, don't know. We're not walking through a park at night because <laughs> that would be dangerous. I would rather be in the daytime, like a nice day date. Okay. Or even or even some um things is like and I've had other people say this, I'll do a nice meet and greet before an actual date. That way we don't waste time. Mm-hmm. A nice nice old coffee day or well now everybody drinks coffee, but just somewhere to where it's a nice buffer and then you actually perceived that okay let's do this like i've done that before Mm -hmm. and i have had women get mad at me like oh why would i want to meet you early i said because i don't want to waste my time i i agree i like the free dates i like the the impromptu 
coffee date, so to say. Um, I'm good with those. I don't feel that a first date has to be some huge, expensive, romantic gesture. So. No, because then a man is pulling his dick out and wait for you to join him. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that was the most awkward thing ever. Like, who would you? And he was just staring me in the eyes. Cause he wanted you to join him. That's why, you know, he was letting him cop a feel in the movie. So he was feeling like, okay, well. I was well. not letting him cop a feel in the movie. That, that's just <laughs> it. Like, I was literally batting this man off. Okay, I was Maybe. literally. If you could cross your legs twice, that's what was happening with him to getting denied access up my skirt. Okay. Maybe that was his way of foreplay. Listen, he was foreplaying by himself. Okay. <laughs> he he foreplayed himself. Mm -hmm. And I was evidently just the object to look at while he finished. It was I mean, could you, I mean, could you blame him? So yes, I can <laughs> blame him. I don't know <laughs> what else to say here. Like the butt. <laughs> I mean, no, there's not much to say, but it's, that's just something you don't hear every day. Well, you kind of do, but you don't, mm -mm. Um, especially in some something like this, because uh, normal people just, uh, you know, are not just going to go all invasive and just pull their thing out and be like, hey, surprise. Right? I mean, <laughs> with no conversation, there was never a... <laughs> There was never a so do you do you think we'll hook up on this date or mm -hmm. you know i hope we can do xyz there was never any discussion it was just it was very odd it was very weird and i no. okay so i should if that discussion was prevalent and it had mm -hmm. at would it have happened maybe maybe mm -hmm. say maybe only because if we'd had a conversation ahead of time about what the expectation was for this date and i was going into this date with the headspace of this is actually a hookup and not a get to know you a date situation because let's face it there are some dates that are literally just set up to smash yeah right? so if mm -hmm. i if we had talked about that ahead of time and I knew from jump, this was the MO and this was what we were doing for the night. And I kind of was a willing participant. I say maybe because I'm already in the headspace. That that's what we're doing. Yeah. But that's, that's not what this was. This was supposed to be one of those innocent. Oh, wow. I can't believe I never saw you on campus and how great that, you know, five years after we graduated, now we've connected and, oh, you know, like, a real situation of trying to meet that person, your person, is mm -hmm. where my head was. So, no, I'm not thinking there's any sex going on tonight at all. At all. Like, that was never part of my plan. Like, we never even kissed. Like, let's break that down. Like, he didn't even try to make a move for a first kiss or to fill me out to see if he, if we were even connecting on that level. And you would think that after me stopping him from filling me up and groping me, in the theaters that he wouldn't even be in that frame of mind, but he still clearly was. Yeah. Yeah, you were probably giving the eyes, like, just go ahead and do it, get it over with. What eye, what eye <laughs> would I give to tell someone to just move forward? Like, nah. Well, it could have been the liquor that was still in her system previously, so, you know. I mean, I think we had one drink at mm -hmm. the bar. Sometimes all it takes is one. My gosh. And then to sit through an hour and a half movie, you don't think that wore off by then? No? I don't know, but I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> from a man's perspective. If there was nothing that I was giving that invited this behavior. Well, clearly you were wearing a skirt, so you was giving something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's all it took, huh? <laughs> hey, for some men, yes. Others, it could take even more than that, but you just never know the um the intentions or the idea of someone because if they don't make it known there is that hidden motive or agenda whichever it is that is perceived and then this is what happened and you're getting groped and filled and then you know you're getting creamed <laughs> Ew. oh god oh god yeah so then this other thing that i went on and i actually shared this one on my podcast but I know that um, I think on my last season of our podcast, of Dirty Rose's podcast, um, mm -hmm. we talked about this date that I went on. <laughs> it was one of those bad dates that 
it wasn't anything scary or crazy like this last one. It's just a series of unfortunate events, okay? And it was all brought on by me, just me. I just screwed up the whole, whole date. So I remember that I was um, in, this, this one I actually was still in undergrad. And one of my roommates in the dorms who lived across the hall, um, her boyfriend was in the military and they were head over heels in love. He was just the next best thing. And he was coming home from deployment and she was like, Hey, you know, my, my boyfriend has a friend. What would you think about us doing a double date? And I was like, and it would be a blind date. And I was like, okay, great. Sign me up. Let's go. I want to meet somebody. Right. And if he's great, like your, you know, fiance or whatever he is to you, then yeah, let's do it. So, um, she and I are at her house. Um, her mother's house because you know we lived in the dorms and we're getting ready and the boyfriend comes over with his buddy my date and I'm she goes down to greet them and I'm still kind of finishing whatever upstairs and they're standing in the living room and I remember I come down the stairs only I trip and fall <laughs> and all you hear from the other room is just doo -doo -doo -doo, right <laughs> They don't see me, but they can hear this whole commotion just tumbling down the stairs. And so they're like, yo, are you all right? I'm like, I'm okay. You know, I'm just screaming from the other room. It's good. I'm fine. So I finally come out and I meet my guy and it's a little awkward because they're like, no, seriously, like, are you good? Did you bust a lip or anything? And so we kind of play it off and we move forward from that. We then go to get we then go to leave. We're actually going to dinner. We're having tacos. We're going to this little Mexican restaurant because who doesn't love tacos, right? Mm -hmm. And um, go to get in the car. And I had these really super cute like pants on that just accentuated my body the right way. Super cute, but they're also like some of my oldest pair of pants that I just can't get rid of because I love them that much. Yep, yeah, I myself. Yeah. I yeah. So I go to get in the car and they rip right on the crack of the ass. Okay. Oh so gosh. I'm literally ass out and I'm wearing a, a thong. Okay. So <laughs> it's just ass out. After falling down the steps, I now have to go change my pants, but I don't want to let the guys know that this happened. So I'm like talking to my girlfriend. I'm like, can I borrow your jacket? And so I go to, I tie her jacket around my waist, go in the house and I change clothes. Um, and then later come back out and my not so cute outfit, I no longer felt cute, but at least my pants fit properly. And we go to have our little tacos and um, chips are just falling into my cleavage. I mean, I just was a whole hot mess from the beginning to the end of this date, okay? I'm just eating chips right out my <laughs> You know what? At this point, fuck it. We're not going to be together. This is not going to be a thing. I'm just going to enjoy these little chips and never saw them again there was never any talk about us getting together it was just like i said a series of unfortunate events and i take full ownership for screwing up that date royal it was just dun, 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 dun. yeah so that was fun <laughs> that was fun so yeah that was um that was that was early dating days that was back in my early 20s <laughs> but yeah good times so those are just a few of my stories. I have so many more that of course you can tune in to our stuff to hear them all, but these are just the two I thought I'd share with you. you I, I don't know where to go from here. I'm just saying, I don't know where you can go from here. Like it was, I don't know if there was anything I could have done differently other than start with a different pair of pants, but that doesn't change the fact that I tumbled down the stairs to meet this man, okay? And, and the chips, like who can control always just, you know, when you're classy, you're classy. Sometimes you just got to eat chips out your chest. I don't know. <laughs> nah, I've, I've never seen class women eat chips out their chest. Now maybe something's falling in there, but never just like, they're just going at it. Like they just got something extra. <laughs> Heaven forbid they go to waste, you know, just, it's still good. Yeah. Good times. <laughs> Yeah, maybe you should stop online dating and just hit up a coffee shop and sit there and see what happens. I don't know. I don't I don't feel like who I'm looking for is just sitting at coffee shops on a regular day, you know? You, like you don't know that. You can't put that notion that you at least have to try. 
I have better things to do than to just sit in a coffee shop. So I don't know. Well, um, take those better things with you and go sit at the coffee shop. <laughs> can't, can't do that. It doesn't work for <laughs> what I got going on. But mm -hmm. I mean, it's obviously a suggestion. It's just, uh, who knows? We'll see. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying, well, um, I could definitely say this has been a pleasure. I do want to say thank you so much for coming well, on, for having sharing. Me. Oh, no problem. <laughs> I mean, and please do the shameless plug to where, you know, you plug your, your, all your stuff. Absolutely. No, you can, um, find me on Instagram at Nick B underscore Nick B and that's Nick with a K. Um, I can also be reached on all my platforms related to Dirty Roses podcast. You can tune in and listen to us wherever you stream your podcast. May that be Apple Play, Spotify, Pandora, you name it, we're there. You can also watch us live on, not really live, but you can watch our episodes on YouTube as well, which is Dirty Roses podcast. Um, but yeah, feel free to like, follow, subscribe. We're easy to get in touch with. We love listener letters and questions. Um, my co-host, Lee Larie excuse me, Lee Larie can also be found under that name on all social media platforms. Um, and as well as you can get her on Dirty Roses podcast. Absolutely. Well, Nick, thank you so much for coming on and sharing. Um, I want to say just as a man, I feel very violated myself. <laughs> <laughs> because no, no man in his right mind would ever do that to someone who's least trying and putting their best foot forward so let me just tell you that doesn't happen all the time and it probably won't that was like one in a million really I agree. <laughs> <laughs> well people that was my guest miss nick b from the dirty roses podcast um what can i say her co-host was interesting last week when she came on and she dropped hers and now we had her counterpart and these two ladies wow i see why the podcast is just popping the way it is because you have two beautiful women sharing their experiences and that experience right there like she said wasn't exclusive and i was exclusively entertained i can tell you that much so i want to thank her for coming on make sure y'all go check her out on all podcast platforms i will put her information down below so this has been another episode Episode of BDC. Yes, Bad Dating Chronicles. My guest today was Nick B from the Dirty Roses podcast. This has been another episode. I'm Will, and I'll talk to y'all all soon. Y'all take care. <laughs>